Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper, and in this video I'm going to declare that the upgrade of the off-grid solar power system here at the retreat location is complete. I'm going to call and see if I can get an appointment with the electrical inspector sometime this week. We made the final connections this morning. I connected the ground rod to the ground bus bar in the Hoffman box. We topped off the batteries with fresh distilled water and ran a two-hour equalization cycle. Now that we have some good lighting out here and most of the components are in place, we'll show you what's under the hood. Right there I have a Morningstar TS MPP T60 charge controller, which is currently running in absorption mode. We'll see if we can zoom in on that and show you that. I don't have the best camera out here. Putting out 15 volts. To the right of that I have a Kenwood 2 meter radio. I'm going to use that as an emergency radio out here. Up there is the ground bus bar, and way up there in the top you see a little metal tab, and that's a temperature sensor that's connected to this temperature control system down here, which runs off of 12 volts. The display is in Celsius, and what happens here is if the temperature gets too hot in this Hoffman box, that muffin fan will kick on, expelling the hot air from the top of the box, and drawing in cool air from the bottom side of the box. Let me see if I can step up here without shaking the camera too much. My neighbor was kind enough to bring me some crushed stone to put in front of the pad here. And I'm going to get another ton to go all the way around because I really like it. Next to the electrical box in the liquid tight conduit coming down here is all of our cabling into the battery box. And how nice it is to be able to get into this box without it being under my deck. It really used to hurt my neck when I had this in the other location. So we have four Trojan T105RE flooded lead acid batteries. Over here we have the temperature sense cable that goes up to the charge controller. We have a voltage sense as well. Here we have a manual or mechanical marine grade high current DC switch that allows me to turn the system off. And then over here I have another a &L fuse to protect the system. So should something go wrong inside the Hoffman box, get some kind of short, that fuse will blow and protect the system. For the panels, there are three 265 watt Curacia panels wired in parallel. It's a 12 volt system coming down together and being combined in this midnight solar PV or solar panel array combiner box which brings the power down into the charge controller. The last thing I did today was add the metal flashing around the battery box not so much to protect it from the water or the elements, but to protect it from the heat. I wanted something bright to reflect the heat away and create a small air gap between the sheet metal and the box so we can have a more stable temperature of the batteries up here. Here's the lid to go over the battery box. Again, I have a piece of sheet metal, a roofing, that sits above the lid to create an air gap to allow the breeze to blow through as these batteries vent because they do create hydrogen gas. And on each end of the box there, you can see there is a vent on this side. And we'll walk around I'll show you the vent on the other side. So we should get some good cross ventilation up here. And in the winter time, I close one of those to help keep the batteries from getting too cold. And there's my master on-off switch there. So that's the project. This is what we've been working on since, I think, October. And I needed to get this done before my permit expired. So tomorrow morning we'll call for the inspector. I'm hoping I'll pass as a standalone off-grid system. And if I have any problems, of course we'll document it here on the channel. We'll fix the problems and call the inspector back. But I think we should be in good shape. The system's well grounded. It's well fused. It's protected. Uh, all the specifications for the panel mounts have been met. That's a 12 foot 5 inch schedule 40 steel pipe. Uh, 6 feet in the ground. 6 feet above the ground. Down in the bottom of this hole, there's 20 80-pound bags of cement, and that pad there is another 20 80-pound bags of cement. So this system is not going anywhere. We've had some pretty high winds over the winter, and I haven't seen any problems whatsoever. So we'll go ahead and button this up, and we'll show you what it's going to look like when it's operating normal up here. Be right back. All right, there's the system all buttoned up and operational. We got the lid on the battery box. I still need to come up with a razor blade and trim the Tyvek material from the bottom of the box there, the overhang, before the critters chew on it. And I've got some wire mesh to put over those vent caps there 
because the critters will chew through those and get into the battery box. But that's not going to be critical for calling the inspector. I'll get that done before I leave for Virginia today. We got the Hoffman box all closed up. I got two little holes. I got to buy some plugs to snap in there. We'll get that done before the inspector gets here. The grounds are all hooked up. We got an external on off switch. So if something goes wrong, somebody can come up here and cut it off. I'll get a Sharpie and label that on off. We got plenty of fuses. Fuses in the battery box, fuses in the Hoffman box, circuit breakers up there in the combiner box. I think we're going to be in good shape. The only thing I'm hoping to get this week before the inspector comes is that load of crushed stone that my neighbor said he'd pick up for me because that little pile there really makes the difference up here with all these big rocks. I want to go all the way around this pad with crushed stone and make it look really good up here and that'll keep the weeds down and keep me from twisting an ankle. So for those of you who follow my channel, thank you for your patience as this project dragged along since last October. But I'm pleased to report that I think it's finally done. Hopefully we pass inspection. If not, we'll fix the problems, document my mistakes here on the channel so you guys can learn from them and move on to something else. Like this project down here for my wife. Those are four 16 foot six by six post ground contact. And we're gonna dig all this dirt out over here this week. She wants a roof pavilion kind of thing, so she has some shade out here. So that little campfire pit's going away. This big mound of dirt's going to go away. That post is coming out there, and we're going to have four posts, 18 feet by 18 feet. This year, we're just going to put down gravel, but next year, I'll put a deck down, and maybe eventually roof it over and screen it in. So that's the next project out here at the retreat location. Not so much prepping related, but it's something the wife wants, so we're going to get it done. That's the summer project. And I got some posts over there. I'm not sure if you can see them by the shed. I'm going to put a little roof coming off the side of the shed so I have a place to park my four-wheeler when I come out here and it's raining when I'm working in the shed. So I'll wrap this video up. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper back out at the retreat location in the beautiful mountains of West Virginia. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, guys, a little addendum for my video here. I'm up at the neighbor's house. He's putting in a little dog pool here. And they're slowly getting in there. Ten minutes ago, that water was clean. He's back filling it by hand. But the guy's going to come back on Monday, run that machine up, and get the last of it done and grade this off. And I guess the only thing left on your project is to put the filter in, right? Filter and pump. Filter and pump. I think that filter's going to be running overtime with these dogs. All right, guys, thanks for watching.